High up in the clear blue noontime sky, the sun appears to be much the same day in, day out, year after year. But astronomers have long known that this is not true. The sun does change. Every 11 years or so, sunspots fade away, bringing a period of relative calm. This is called solar minimum, and it's a regular part of the sunspot cycle. The sun is heading towards solar minimum now. Sunspot counts were relatively high in 2014, and now they're sliding toward a low point expected in 2019 to 2020. During solar minimum, we can see the development of long-lived coronal holes. Coronal holes are vast regions in the sun's atmosphere where the sun's magnetic field opens up and allows streams of solar particles to escape the sun as the fast solar wind. Streams of solar wind flowing from coronal holes can cause space weather effects near Earth when they hit Earth's magnetic field. These effects can include temporary disturbances of the Earth's magnetosphere, called geomagnetic storms, auroras, and disruptions to communications and navigation systems. There are unique space weather effects that get stronger during solar minimum. For example, the number of galactic cosmic rays that reach Earth's upper atmosphere increases during solar minimum. Galactic cosmic rays are high-energy particles accelerated toward the solar system by distant supernova explosions and other violent events in the galaxy. During solar minimum, the sun's magnetic field weakens and provides less shielding from these cosmic rays. There are radiations that are coming in now, energies, including gamma rays and including those energies that cause the sun to create greater levels of ultraviolet. All of these things are coming in around the sun now because what is happening is we're going into a solar minimum of some depth and the sun in a solar minimum, it shrinks its corona. The thing we see is the light radiating out from the sun is, is generated by and includes a plasma field that captures all of these strange radiations from space that the sun is plowing through. And usually the sun eats it all up and we get very little of it. Cosmic rays used to be relatively infrequent and relatively rare in human experience compared to the way we are going through them now. So we humans are now getting bombarded by levels of energies that we are not, not normally used to, to incorporating in our being. And they are becoming incorporated in our being because we react to light, electromagnetic radiation of all kinds. All humans and a lot of animals are crazy now because of these extra radiations coming in. The irrationality of crowds, riots, attitudes, uh, hateful words, 
all of these kinds of irritation responses that you see around you in society make sense if we're all being bombarded with energies that we're not prepared to deal with. And most of us, because we're unaware of this, we're not taking those energies into account, so we're not doing anything at all with our bodies to try and dissipate these energies. It's my thinking that we each as individuals, just in order to preserve our own sanity and the own, our own ability to navigate through uh, modern life without adding to the problems and keep yourself calm, uh, you've got to do things to do that. You've got to ground yourself. You've got to understand you're dealing with extra levels of radiation. You've got to, to take um, on board minerals and vitamins that will, will aid your body in coping with this because otherwise the prognosis is not good. Not only do we have the people with 5G increasing the electromagnetic um, smog around us, and it's actually not smog, we're in a tsunami of this stuff constantly being inundated by this. Well, getting back to the idea of the uh, solar changes, this is not the first time that we've, we've had that happen to the planet. So it's a very interesting age to be in that's gonna last for some period of time. It's gonna be absolutely chaotic though, okay? Because we're basically living through the destruction of many old systems in order that new systems might be birthed. It'll be absolutely fantastic with technology that'll be coming on out, but it's gonna be horrific with social changes and the impact of these social changes as many people fail to adapt to what's going on. But, you know, it's one of these kind of things where if you enhance your calm and take care of yourself, and these sorts of things you can navigate and if you're far looking one can affect great change even as an individual do think that this is one of the greatest events in human history unfolding in front of us right now. It occurs on a regular 400 year cyclical pattern. It's turned to the grand solar minimum where the solar activity goes into an extremely low state. It affects global crop production and then the knock on effects from that. If we can't grow enough food to meet the demand of 8 billion people, something is going to have to shift in the economy, the population. They're getting us to prepare for the wrong outcome on purpose because you have to think about the end goal of this is to depopulate part of our planet. Next best step, use a natural cycle, blame it on nature, nobody's culpable, and then run geoengineering on top of it to you know, reduce some of the crops along the way. This is where the electric universe ties into everything. Now you think about our sun, it's 1.2 million times larger than the, than the earth. So electrically and magnetically, the way that that thing is affecting our Earth, we're coupled with it. When you look at the magnetic field lines coming off the sun, they actually connect to and intertwine with our Earth. So when the sun steps down its intensity, 
electromagnetically, the charge, literally the electrical charge, our Earth is directly affected and it needs to step down too. And we're heading into a really amplified, heavily electrified plasma dense region of space with debris. Vibrationally speaking, everything's rising up, if you will. These electromagnetic changes in the sun, everybody on the planet's feeling that something is not right right now or something is changing, but they just can't put their finger on it. That's the electromagnetic frequency from our sun changing. Now, us being receivers of that, we should be able to work and amplify these energies ourselves. And you've seen through history countless times of civilizations just completely disappearing, leaving almost no trace except the buildings. Now, again, are these these uplifts and these vibrational shifts that we're about to experience again? Now, for us as a human, perhaps we shift into a different dimensional realm but the earth itself still retains some of the damage on you know, this cosmic bombardment. And Douglas Vogt's done an amazing amount of work on this. And he calls it like a mini micronova from the sun that sends out a shower of not only debris, but energy. It's almost the, the entire surface of the sun and everything of the plasma from the sun releases in one gigantic puff and it hits our earth. And that is the catalyst. And you'll find a lot of things disappear at that time. There's sudden, I guess, genetic shifts at this time that come in where they find new species that suddenly evolve literally overnight. So there has to be some kind of massive electrical spiritual connection that comes in that allows dimensional shift during this time. You know, all these things are talked about in the ancient cycles of time. We're just repeating a cycle, it seems. And it comes back, it's always the same things. But look how our societies have been set up since the 1600s. It's only about the hard stuff around you. They've dissuaded us from looking at anything spiritual vibrationally wise. They don't even want you to look at Tesla technology. Everything that is on the vibrational and frequency realm is totally being erased from memory. And if you even talk about it, you're laughed at, you know, like they put us in a box from kindergarten. What about free power? Why can't we use frequency vibration for free power? healing our diseases you know we can't do that we can't even talk about it without being you know demonetized websites taken down because we want to talk about frequency healing and it all comes back to that same thing vibration and frequency but anyway these great changes are here and they've been forecast so when we look at it we do have the choice to live at it in fear or look at it at the greatest change that we have opportunities to vibrationally shift into other realms if you will that are outside the chaos realm and if you have the mindset to help, there's gonna be enormous opportunities out there. Perhaps this is the switch point where we come off the centralized control into individualized or more sovereign aspects of our, of our living and being. And that's the next step of what, as the shift occurs, the next step is gonna be back to the sovereign nature of ourselves and our communities. We could have the best world that we've always envisioned of this enlightened age. And here we are right now, it's a great time to be alive.